Hello and welcome back to the Pacific Alliance of Collegiate Gamers, Hearthstone Thursday. We have, in the third game, we've gone through two games now. Um, let's throw the schedule up on the screen so you can all see. We first saw Arizona versus UCLA. UCLA won that matchup, giving them, putting them at 1-1. Oregon versus Utah. Utah won that matchup, putting them at 1-1. I feel like this kind of like, we were just talking before the stream ended about how kind of like evenly matched all of these teams feel and how we constantly seem to be going to game five. And all of these 1-1s on the, on the screen uh, are really pushing that. Um, so this next game that we're going to be watching is Stanford versus Arizona State. This is a show match. These teams are not in the same division, so the wins and losses for this game will not go towards their overall group score. Both of them are at one win so far, though. Um, so, hoping to pull out their second win of the of the match of the season. Yep. And so we've got Arizona State and Stanford, and the only difference between these two uh, lineups are Arizona State is bringing Dude Paladin and. Stanford is bringing Control Paladin. Mm, uh, yes. The the other three decks are essentially the same. Stanford and Arizona State are both bringing Cube Warlock, Tempo Mage or Secret Mage, and Spiteful uh, Summoner Dragon Priest. Yeah. So Stanford bans away Dude Paladin, and Arizona State bans away the Warlock. Apparently, it's not that uncommon today to ban Dude Paladin over Q block. <laughs> this is the third set in a row where we've seen <laughs> Someone this. Someone has happen. not banned Q block. Al although, granted, Utah was bringing Control Paladin, not Dude Paladin. Right. But what's going on? People just are really scared of Paladin right now. And to be honest, if you look at, I mean, if you look at the raw numbers, quote, like Paladin does have the highest win rate right now. It's true. Because of Murloc, Dude, and Control are all very good decks. Yeah, c control. I mean, eh. Eh. on ladder is eh, eh. but second tier, eh. maybe third. <laughs> but definitely Murloc and Dude Paladin, especially on ladder, are very, very strong. But Stanford's bringing Exodia Paladin, though. Oh, yeah. yeah I am very OTK, excited to see control that. Control OTK Paladin. <laughs> so it's similar to what we saw. Um, actually, we didn't see Utah this week with their Control Paladin. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, that deck is looking to utilize the hero power from Uther of the Ebon Blade comboed with Auction Master Beardo where it allows you to play your hero power multiple times in one turn mm -hmm. and and with the as soon as with the help of, of coins down, from Burgly Bully. Yep, and as soon as four of those uh, four horsemen mm -hmm. are on the the board you just win the game. Doesn't matter what the board state looks like. Doesn't matter how much health you or your opponent have. Doesn't even matter if your opponent has an ice block. <laughs> so, um, looking at this lineup really quick, why does Stanford ban Dude Paladin? Is it just because Paladin is scary, or is there a reason that they might so I think prefer to face Q block? So Stanford is is more targeting Q block here. Mm -hmm. um, with the the secret mage, uh, spiteful dragon priest can get there. It has a uh, because of song stealer. Yep. So they image. have they have um, the the mind controls right. They have the, the they have cabal shadow two cabal cabal shadow priests. Um, but they don't have the the pine size potion. Pine size potion. They don't. They have opt for double cabal shadow priest. Oh, of course they don't have pine size potion because it's the spiteful. So. They have the double Cabal Shadow Oh, priest. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they have Twilight the double, Acolyte, They though. have the double Acolyte. So they could use Twilight Acolyte Cabal Shadow Priest, too. They're only running one free from Amber, though. That is correct. Yes. They're running one free from Amber. Still two mind controls. Um, let's see. What else is interesting? Um, they're running a Swamp Ooze tech. Uh, they're running a Glimmer Root. Yep, so they are they are purposefully teching for the warlock. With okay. The yeah. The ooze. Um, they're running. Yep, like you said, the st the song stealers. So the the silence there. 
Uh, and then let's look at their their other lists here. Yeah. So so S secret is running the potion of polymorph. And they run one lackey, only one lackey, but they have a spell breaker, and the potion of polymorph. They only have I think five secrets in this deck. Uh, um, yep. So they're running double counter spell, double runes, and potion of polymorph. They are right. not running ice block. Yo, yes, they're not running ice block. Interesting choice. It is, um, especially because they're going, like, you know, they're targeting that cube warlock. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like they're opting for, yeah, that spell breaker instead of the ice block. Right. All right. So yeah, so it seems like both of these decks are kind of like suited to face the cube block. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and like I was saying, the last couple sets. If you're going to target Warlock, bring the lineups and the tech cards to Life do it. Shall bring and I definitely think Stanford it. is doing that right here. All right. Well, let's get right into game one. Stanford is starting out with their Spiteful Priest, whereas Arizona State is going to start with their Tempo Mage. Yep. So. Not entirely sure if this is the mulligan here. But yeah. Arizona State looking to keep both Kieran Tormages and Cabal Lackey with no secret in hand. <laughs> that seems a little greedy. It does seem greedy. Stanford, I think, of course, wants to get rid of the Free From Amber. Um, yeah, I think no, they're going to just throw away they, everything. They definitely cost this. Duskbreaker mm. is good because, yeah. again, Secret Mage, almost all of your minions have three health. Now, that explosive runes, though, pretty good for Arizona State. Mm hmm. Hmm. Do they play that now? So, if you lackey explosive runes, you risk proccing it on something inconsequential what like another Spite Historian. What yeah, that's what I was thinking. Another Spite Historian. Um, um, a Northshire <laughs> Cleric would be better, but still not like. Yeah. The, fav the thing you want to hit. If you do nothing, I mean, your tempo mage. You al you always want to be playing stuff. Yeah. Looks like they opt not to play. Yeah. ASU just has, they have all these minions the in their hand, but they have to choose whether or not they want to play them at a lower, v at a lower value. Yeah. And Stanford with the emote we got some uh, some friendly banter going on here. We have many. All right, looks like we're gonna Kieran Tor explosive runes. Um, Kieran Tor is a pretty good card to have down on turn two. Yep. Um, Stanford doesn't have a well. Stanford opting to steal the four attack with this explosive runes. Yeah. We'll just snipe it right out of the sky or the ground. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, this arcane intellect, I. It's a decent I, card. It's pretty good. Play. Um, I mean, as considering Arizona State doesn't have any more secrets, yeah. they need more secrets. It'll help them to get more value out of the lackey and the current tour mage. And there's another second explosive, explosive runes. runes. So Stanford just gonna tempo out of Duskbreaker. They'll likely just play uh, Draconid Operative next turn. Hmm. Let's see. ASU. Someday I'll be just like you. All right, we're going tempo. Get as many of the cards out of our hand as we can. Yeah, hoping they draw Alaneth probably the next two turns. Probably. Uh, Stanford though has has a lot of options. They could Dustbreaker if they wanted to spend that already, but Tar Creeper also deals with this board. Yeah, I, I think I think I think I just like the maybe the Duskbreaker, Dragon and Operative just dies. Yeah, it steals you a card, but it just dies. Mm -hmm. The Duskbreaker at least clears your opponent's Medicine. board. <laughs> Does get picked up by the explosive runes. The explosive runes probably the reason that Duskbreaker might have been a better choice than Tar Creeper. Um uh, definitely. Uh Glyph into maybe Frostbolt here. Yeah, I get more Just damage. Extra damage. Um, you could maybe try go for Potion of Polymorph. 
Potion of Polymorph is... To do. We're coming up on Spiteful Summoner turn. I feel like they're going to try again with another Glyph. Uh, wor maybe worse options here. Cabalist Tome, maybe. Uh, three mana Cabalist Tome is not bad. Yeah, Cabalist Tome um, can get you some good... Good options. We have many secrets. Opt to just tempo out the Kirin Tor Mage. I think. Yeah, we're just gonna see Spiteful Summoner come down. What Beat wonders? Eight or ten. Eight or this ten. Conjuring ten. Of weird. Cthune. Seven Ooh. fourteen. That is not something that's safe to deal with anytime soon. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> um, so you can mana win the boss tome, and then mm -hmm. you hope for something like a polymorph? Polymorph. Another couple of catalyst tome. Infinite value. But I, I, those are not the cards Arizona State wants to see. And they can just steal this mana worm. They could, yeah. Take it for their own. Steal the mana worm, kill the four three, make a nice big board. I wonder. The mana worm is obviously a threat. Um but they don't really they don't have any way to make it into their own threat. So, I wonder. I'm wondering if taking it is really the like best use of the. I mean, what else are you gonna steal with Cabal? Mm, I suppose, yeah. Shadow Priest, right? Like, it's not gonna be any lower next turn. You're developing a four or five. I think it's fine. We'll see if Stanford agrees. Let me change. There it goes. Is someone injured? Throws down the cleric for good measure. It does get punished by flame strike if Arizona State decides to play it, but I mean that only clears three damage. Yeah. Do they just firelands portal to four five? I think so. Or go face? Oh, they're gonna go face. Okay. Not oh, oh, and they get a five mana or five five it's stealth. They could. Um, so Grand Archivist. Mind control with stealth. Uh, I don't think so. Because like you said before, that's not a valid target, right? Yeah, so, I, yeah, I, I don't think it does. But taunt, throwing though. down this Tar Creeper and Arizona State with Nine no one. way of surviving this board. They have to get like an ice block or something off of this. Let's see, if they flame strike, then there would only be. Nope, they would still die. Yep. <laughs> Four or five lives. Yeah, they have to get a, an ice block or a. And that's not going to do it. Frost Nova. All right. Stand for taking game one against Arizona State. Just kind of fizzling there in a spiteful summoner. Doing work. That 714 is not something Secret Mage or Tempo Mage can do. Yeah, that 714 went unchallenged for the rest of the game. Yeah. Just dealing damage to. Yeah, the Megasaur. To ASU's base. Yep. Um, all right, Stanford so takes game one. Stanford up 1 0. Okay, so now Stanford, let's see. Remind me. They have Secret and Control. OTK Paladin. Stanford's Warlock was banned. Um, yes. But ASU's Dude ASU's. Paladin was banned. Yes. Okay. So, so yeah. So, Stanford doesn't have the cube luck to face. The ASU does still have that up their sleeves. They can pull it out. Um, I don't know. What do you think is going to happen next? Um, I definitely think Stanford will probably go for uh, secrets of their own. Uh, and just try and get that mirror out of the way. Um, you know, it, it's something that happens a lot in collegiate. Is teams just queue the same deck? 
Yeah. It happens all the time. Like, more than what I would consider normal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't quite know why, but collegiate players tend to just cue the same deck. If they lost, they just push through. One thing we didn't do before is call out the players. Stanford has got Tail Toxie, Mitchell, and Sirwind on their team. And ASU has got Jabberwocky, Archie90, oh, and Houdini. It is on. And I, on I called it. Team. So Arizona State sticking with the Secret Mage and Stanford just trying to get this mirror out of the way. And honestly, okay, that's what is, not a bad opening hand. What is different We're, about these decks? That's what I'm going to try to figure second. out. Arizona State has Frost Nova? Uh, yes. Arizona State has one Frost Nova and one Ice Block. Um, Frost Nova? Yep. That is not a card you typically see in <laughs> an aggressive deck. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they've got a... Interesting. I think I wrote this down. Yep. Uh, Tempo may So ASU has a Frost Nova and an Ice Block, where Stanford has a Potion of Polymorph and a Spellbreaker. Arizona State afraid of those aggro lineups, but yeah, Stanford isn't bringing aggro lineups, aside from the Secret Mage, but... They didn't know that when they submitted the No, deck. but <laughs> it's not going to benefit ASU nearly as much as Stanford's tech right choices because even if they lose here they're taking against warlock mm -hmm. everyone brings warlock <laughs> well evidently not we saw earlier one team didn't bring oregon didn't think warlock was any good nope they, they almost won they almost won so maybe they're right Stanford uh, trying to decide if they should coin out the archaeologist or yeah. frostbolt mm -hmm. uh, Honestly, I I kind of like coining out the Archaeologist. Yeah. Simply because it contests this 1 3. However, saving it plays around Counterspell. Gives you that free proc where your spells are just as important as your opponent's. But having that coin, whereas your opponent doesn't, gives you a slight advantage. Right. Um. I think we'll mm. probably see. Yeah, this is hard because you don't want to let Arizona State continue to develop their board like they are, especially with that pro that mana worm uh, could be getting bigger. ASU probably has a, a secret in their hand, um, so Frost Nova in the mana worm I don't think would be a, a bad choice. So we see. The social practice coin frostbolt. I I like this because it nullifies the mana worm and it contests this two three. And then next turn you can just explosive runes or archaeologist. Yeah, they did throw away their coin so that they can't use that on a counter spell now. Um, and the next turn is going to be hmm. kind of. Awkward mana wise. Yeah, I for, guess for Stanford definitely. Arizona State is really happy right now because they've got they've got a lot Lackey of into secret ping. Next turn they can Cabal Crystal Runner. Now it's true. If they could also save the Lackey and not ping yeah. since they don't really have a great target for it right now. So if Arizona State really wants to secure this Crystal Runner coming down, next turn, they play Counterspell. Because then that prevents your opponent from playing explosive runes. Versus something else. However, Arizona State opts for explosive runes, trying to deny maybe an archaeologist from Stanford. Or, uh. Drawn a blink. Kieran Tormage. Um, Kier yeah. That's the card. But Stanford. Stanford has two explosive runs. They have one option when it comes to secrets. Yeah. And honestly, that's probably the best play. 
just like the two one isn't super threatening. Um, the only reason that you would maybe consider not playing it is because they might have a counter spell down. Um, and then Arizona State with this Kieran Tormage pickup. Keep it from hitting the Crystal Runner at least. Yeah. And until they play the next one. Yeah. Well, and then <laughs> you just now you now you play Counterspell. Yeah. And then your Crystal Runner is two mana. Yeah. Basically, two lines of play here, right? You Crystal Runner or you Kieran Tor Counterspell. You take two more damage. You reduce the cost of your 5-5 five, five by two. And Job's done. delay the threat. And you develop a Counterspell. This is what a, this is what a secrets, uh, Secret Mirror, looks, secret like, mirror yeah. looks like. Just trying to play Secrets <laughs> around Secrets. That's going to proc the explosive runes. Upon secrets. And honestly, Arizona State is, is just that much further ahead for the moment. And this Alana pickup is going to continue that. Yeah. Because they have this counter spell, it denies any secrets Stanford may opt to play. Unless and they glyph secret here. However, I don't see them doing that. And Stanford knows that it's not an explosive runes. Yep. And the only secrets that ASU runs are counterspell and explosive. Oh, and the one ice block. So it could be an ice block, but do. it's more likely to be a counterspell. Yep. Um, because there's two of them for uh, Arizona State versus the one ice block. So they're hovering over their explosive runes. Um, that's going to get countered. That's kind of spelled, so now I believe they'll probably go for Glyph here. Yep. Let's see, they have Counterspell, Shifting Scroll, and Polymorph. Hmm. Um, so, I, I don't actually know if Shifting Scroll carries over the two mana reduction or not. It does. Does it? I'm pretty sure. Yep, there. Oh, they went with the Counterspell. Alan S. Pretty good play here. Alan S. Just wants to draw cards, wants to draw damage. Yeah, ASU is ahead right now. You know, they've got the 5-5 five, five on board. Now they've got, they've refilled their hand. They're going to continue to get their damage cards into their hand with Alan F. Um, they're sitting pretty. Yep. Goes for the counterspell fireball line. However, Arizona State... Choosing to play the secret that they so got off of like Primordial Glyph. Yep. I and guess hoping that ASU will be more wild with their guessing of what it is. So here, I like I like this order because Counterspell in this situation is much better than three damage to your the opponent's face when their you only answer is spells of their own. Yeah. Now, which secret does ASU have down now? They have a, a counter spell. That's okay. what they just played. Oh, yes, they just played that. You're right. Hmm. So now... Stanford getting. Ooh. Oh. oh, Stanford giving up. <laughs> yep. And Arizona State just having that advantage from the the get go. Really, they just kind of established that tempo, and Stanford was never able to match that pace, and yeah. and just kind of fell fell behind to the tempo of ASU's own secret mage. Yeah. So that's a win for ASU. Uh, we're one and one now, um, so that will we're not going to see. Let's see. Do we have any mirrors left? Nope. Nope. The it's mirrors uh, are all Major gone. Major Paladin versus Priest and Warlock. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we'll probably see Temple Mage again uh, from Stanford, Arizona State. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a, to a toss up because Temple Mage is pretty good against Spiteful Dragon Priest. 
Uh, they don't really have any way of healing or keeping themselves, moving themselves out of that uh, danger zone mm -hmm. that Tempo Mage presents. And then Q-Block does have a few ways to, to deal with it, but oftentimes it's too little too late. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely think we'll see the, the Tempo Mage come out again for Stanford. Which of, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting choice for ASU. I, I guess we'll just have to see what they pick. And so we're going into game three. Stanford versus ASU. Looks like they've switched to Exodia Paladin. Wow. Changing the deck they lost with. Don't see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> but Arizona State does decide to go with the Q block and Stanford with their OTK Paladin. Mm, Doom Guard in hand. Fun. Also... Light rag in hand. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty rat, a very bad card. Um, yeah, not one you want against Q block. Playing against Q block. Um, although ASU drawing three of their four oh, demons oh yeah. turn two with that lack in hand, they need to be careful over the next couple turns, or that lackey is going to be a five mana two two that does nothing. Yeah. Um. I like the uh, Wax Elemental. I didn't actually get to see the options they had there off of this Stone Hill Defender. Uh, and this, just going for it. Drawing all the cards, playing the Doomsayer, trying to set up this coin lackey turn. And wait, Stanford running the Adapt. I did not see that. Wait. Adaptation. Oh yeah, they do have two adaptations. Okay, so let me go. Interesting. Let me go over my notes for this deck. So they, they run the adaptation instead of the traditional um, hydrologist is what you usually yes. see to get the secret. However, they're saying no, nah, no, nah, we just want to guarantee we have that one mana spell yeah. instead of having to pay two to get one. Yeah, I can see that. Um. Other than that, they have Terum, Light Rag, Tyrion, and Nazoth in this deck to help them control the board. Uh, they also have two Call to Arms, which can pull out of Dirty Rats, Loot Hoarders, Plated Beetles, and Pyromancers. So that's really, I mean, that's why you run Dirty Rat, right? Is so that you can pull it with Call to Arms, but instead you just pull your enemy's Void Lords. Yeah. And so that that past turn there, we had the the dirty rat actually pull the second void lord from Arizona State. Yeah. So they literally drew. Wait. They've they've drawn. Oh yeah, I see what no, you're saying. No 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 no. So they pulled the lackey. Killed the okay. Sorry, I oh, wasn't quite. Oh, is that what happened? Yep. Okay. So now Stanford throwing down this burgundy bullet very early. Actually. Mind if I roll need? Reporting for trying to maybe buy some time here. And this Hellfire. Not actually all that helpful for Arizona State. No, and they're they're being cautious about playing their spells because of the Burgle Bully. Yeah. Um. You, you don't want to give so. I as OTK Paladin, you need two coins and a one mana spell mm -hmm. to pull off the combo. If or three have, coins. Yes. Yeah. You can get it. Yes, <laughs> but you need two coins and a one mana spell. They yeah. have the one mana spell, so uh -huh. they need two coins, and then. Uh, Auction Master Beardo and the the Uther, of course. But those are the those are the cards you need in order to enable that combo. So as long as Arizona State avoids giving Stanford two coins, and if they can keep track of that, then Stanford's win can main win condition is, is void. Now. 
it looks like they opt to give them one coin in favor of just outright killing this Burger Boy, killing themselves for five. So now Stanford, if they want to pull off the combo, will either need to get their second Burgle Bully out and get a coin off of that, or there is an option to, if you can manage to make one of your four dudes stick one turn, then you only need one coin the next turn. Yep, that is that is correct. So, however, with, with, uh, with the amount of control that Q block has, I don't yeah. know if we'll end up seeing that happen necessarily. This is the second dirty rat. See, this is That's why you want the dirty rat. This is why you run dirty rats, <laughs> because you play called arms and you want to thin your deck and get closer to your OTK combo. Meanwhile, getting free 2-6 taunts. Yeah. ASU's got a pretty thick hand. They still have three of their demons in hand. Um, and no skull. Yeah, no way of really developing them. They could faceless. They could faceless the 8-8 uh, or... The giant here. I think they're they're afraid, though, of a, maybe an equality that would yeah. essentially nullify that. Um, they could try to go for the uh, Defile here, just to clear two of the minions. Um, it's not a great play. They could just throw the 8-8 into the 2-6 and then use the 1-3 to do whatever. Yeah. But I think their I like, hand is full. I think I like the Faceless play, but doing nothing. Okay, we're going to Hellfire. Okay. Leaving them with an 8-3. Which is not an easy thing for Stanford to deal with. Um, they could use well, their weapon and take eight damage. They could um, they pyromancer, have have pyro consecrate, consecrate, which is still not the favorite way to use pyro mm. or consecrate, uh, <laughs> especially against Q block. Nope. I think we'll probably see the rallying blade come out here, though from Stanford because they have this Ragnaros the Light Lord mm -hmm. in hand. Yeah. Let me think. Rallying Blade, Hero Bower. Um, you have two Pyromancers. You could choose to play one now simply to put that on the board. Maybe yeah. use Spiker's Steed on, speed, speed on the next turn. Reporting for duty. Stanford opting for the uh, 8 damage to face line. And ASU just top decks oh, a 3 mana 8 8. Another giant. Yeah, ASU just has. <laughs> it's probably the best card. I mean, maybe that or Skull. I mean, I, as ASU, I'm considering just coining Void Lord. <laughs> uh, up up to this point yeah and even still coin void lord because i have Nazar. right true hmm they coin void lord i wonder stanford couldn't do m they couldn't do any couldn't kill the void lord well cuz to void oh the file interesting they want another card, I guess. Okay. I guess the file's not doing a whole lot against against this deck, so you just kind of want to thin your hand a little bit. Hmm. I don't know. I was thinking you coin Void Lord, and the next turn you faceless your Void Lord and play the Giant. Mm. Yeah. Rag heals, maybe answers the 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, I feel like that's mm. kind of the only the only good play here. 
so there is a play where you wild pyro, adapt your wild pyro, and give it poisonous. <laughs> give it poisonous. That's but true. I think Stanford might be one of That might be why they're playing the adaptation. I mean, it's, it's a clever way to try and... They're going to use one of the adaptations. Yep, so they have here. poisonous liquid membrane and. Ooh. Uh, I think it was the. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this, this denies ASU from doing some spellstone shenanigans. Mm -hmm. It doesn't deny them from playing Faceless Manipulator on Stanford's <laughs> own 8 8. That's true. I think that's. You just do that. You're like, that's a very nice eight. <laughs> I think I will take it for myself. I'll make a copy. I wonder. They'll, they'll heal for four. They'll, they can trade and still have an eight eight on the board. Well, so you tap, so you'll heal for six. True. <laughs> Darkness. Nope. No. They really want more void wars or. Doom. I don't know. ASU pro might be looking for, you know, that Doomsayer combo. With Stanford having so much ability to, you know, continue trying to... The Doom Guard combo? Just like, just like getting as many Doom Guards as they can. Yeah, yeah. That might be why they're saving the Manipulator oh, to wonder. use on a Doom Guard. They're saving the Cube to use on a Doom Guard. Um, because what they want is to be able to play to play Gul'dan and get as many Doom Guards as possible. Yeah, but Stanford here doesn't really have any good plays. I mean, they can Tar Creeper, Spike Ridge Steed, uh, Cool. What they really want is they want to be drawing cards. They want to be drawing their their combo. They want Uther. Oh, quickly. They yeah, want, they need Uther. They want Burgly Bully for that second coin. They mm. can't play this adaptation if they want to realistically pull off the combo. So I think they're just going to park creeper and yep, speed. Say, your turn, ASU. What do you got? What do you got, indeed? And what they don't got is a skull of Minari. <laughs> right, you are. <laughs> However, oh, spellbreaker! They got a nice fatty silence right there. Oh, off the top. spellbreaker on against Spike Ridge Steed is the worst feeling. Your magic it is not seen. Oh. Is running the one, uh, the one spellbreaker there in their Q block. There's the equality, so they can do the wild pyromancer combo. Um, yep, so they do have that available to them now. Yeah. They also have a quality consecration. Yeah. Do that. There's the Gul'dan. There's Gul'dan. Still no, still no school of nine. At this point, I think ASU is pretty safe to keep pushing face. Um, Absolutely. You just go face with this. At no point do you need to clear your opponent's board. So Especially not if it's a 1-5 and a 1-1. One, one. Um, I mean, the only other thing that they might consider is... Do you tap? See if you can get something playable. Well, you can't tap right now, because your hand is full. Oh, is this 10 cards? Yes. I, I thought it was 9. Um, I was going to say, the only other thing that they might consider is just... They've got Nazoth in hand, they've got Gul'dan in hand. You could, you could cube... Your Void Lord now. You could. You um, could. Just, you've got both cubes. <laughs> you might as well. Yeah. And let's see, the Stanford run, the silence, they don't. So, I mean, your cube is safe. It's never going anywhere. Uh, Arizona State, up for cooldown. I, I can respect this. It does get you. Your other Void Lord that died, you Void Walker, and it gets you that hero power that's going to help you push damage your face, which is what ASU needs to do yeah. as soon as possible. Blood so Reaver Gul'dan's hero power is just nuts. It really is. When I first saw this card come out, or be released, I I saw the two mana, deal three, heal three. That is a six health yeah. swing. That's insane. On top of 
summoning me up to seven demons <laughs> that have died this turn. If that's not a game-changing 10-mana card, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. And of course, as we've seen, Blood Reaver Gul'dan is one of the most powerful Death Knight cards in existence. Hmm. Alright, so Stanford like going for the Wild Pyromancer quality here. We're gonna leave a ASU with six one threes with taunt. Um, Reporting for duty. Which I mean, is not fun. And they, well, and they but it's definitely better than what they were going up against before. Yeah. Although Arizona State sitting pretty here with Plenty of health. Yeah. Their they, opponent doesn't have Uther. They've got an Azoth that's going that will summon three Void Lords. They've got this hero power. And or a lackey. So many bloody decisions. Because there was a lackey that died earlier. That's true. Does Nazoth summon random? It, it's random, so from the pool of minions that have died, it, it randomly selects them. Same with Gul'dan. So many bloody decisions. Hmm. So if they go, so and a beetle. I think. I think a beetle. No. What? I must feed but now. ASU doesn't have. No, they don't beetles. run beetles. Yeah. Like unless some, they stole a beetle. Some people do. Okay. <laughs> For some reason, I thought there was a beetle. Oh my God, that was. At this point, they're throwing a cube down just to get something on board. Something on board. Something with more damage. Um, you know, get something out of their hand. Yeah. Well, I mean, ASU has 11 from hand because you hero power, hellfire, coin, guard. That's 11 damage. You don't care about this board at all. And with that, yep. Arizona State will take game three as they go through the motions. I can't see them missing this lethal. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty, pretty simple. There's a lot of options. You got a lot of damage in there. All right. Q block. Does Q block. Three things. for three today. Yep. <laughs> Has yet to lose a game. Yep. So, like even against the the lineups and decks that mm -hmm. are trying to target Warlock, they're they're not getting the win. That was, I think. Let's see. So, um, that was ASU's Q block. Um, Stanford. We were talking about their their mage deck and their priest deck were both prepared for Q block, mm -hmm. but their paladin deck was the one that ended up facing it. Um, yeah, that's why I was like, you, sh you just keep the secret mage yeah. because it's good against cube, it's good against spiteful. You might as well just cue it again. But mm -hmm. this time they heard me and they're like, ha, Jordan, I heard you don't think collegiate <laughs> players <laughs> swap With their decks. The well, shall bring victory. we'll show him. And All then right. They swapped the wrong deck. So but we're going to see the Paladin again up against ASU's Spiteful Priest. Stanford starting with, could have started with Beardo and Burgle, Burgly Bully. Instead, opting for Uther. The Beardo, I mean. Stanford keeps the Bully and Terra. They didn't keep the Bully. They tried they to swap the bully? the bully and they got oh, okay. another one. Okay. I um, looked up, I saw Bully, I looked up again, there was they a Bully. They did choose to keep Terum. Um, honestly, I don't think swapping the Beardo was necessarily a bad choice. Yes, it's one of your combo pieces, but it's dead until you play Uther anyways. Yeah, I, um, you'd rather have other cards in your hand. Because uh, you, you want to play Uther before you play Beardo, right? Yeah. And so getting them in the opposite order is not ideal. So Granted. now he, they have Uther, so at least they're not looking for that. But Arizona State has spiteful summon. They have his story, operative summoner, and and let's see this ASU um, and his Duskbreaker. That'll answer a coin oh. called Arms. 
Let's ASU see. has the perfect curb. ASU's Dragon Priest is running in Ooze Tech, uh, two Glimmer Roots, no Dragon Fire. Mind if I roll need? They're running an Ooze. They are running. Which is ooze. interesting because they're banning Warlock. Once upon a time. Why? Why the Ooze? I, I guess in this matchup, it'll this be, matchup good it'll be good against Weapon, which, yeah. okay, sure. Uh, maybe it's good against Alana. Um, so you know what? I don't I don't hate it. But they obviously don't have it, but they don't need it either. Not yet. Uh, Stanford contemplating the coin, realizing they probably should keep it because coin is part of their win condition. <laughs> However, who knows? Maybe... Uh, Arizona State has the world's best curve, which I would say this is probably one it's of the close. best curves I've seen in a while. Twilight Drake, operative, spiteful summoner, into another operative, <laughs> into free from amber. Like, Arizona State has this game think. in their hand. <laughs> it all depends on what kind of ends up happening on the side of Stanford. Rallying Blade. Okay. Get rid of these cards for that. Honestly, I would have maybe rather seen a Plated Beetle yeah. come down, but I guess this is just more mana efficient. So... Well, I'm trying to get rid of those threats so that the call to arms maybe can stick a yeah. little bit better. Yeah, um, and, and maybe the... Uh, See if we get a dirty rat. The dirty I rat. think ideally we want two dirty rats. Um, so there is the one dirty rat. There's the pyro, which will combo well with an equality. However, it's a one turn too early since the spiteful summoner is not going to come out until turn six. So dustbreaker. Looks like you can see a dustbreaker come like down. That's a great board wipe. And uh, ASU says, you know what? I don't need to play an operative, I'll just play the dust breaker, and then that's a nice bully you have there. I'll just play a too bad I'm playing nothing but I'll, minions for the next a five. Four turns. four that yeah, yeah, just pulls out another minion without playing a spell. Yeah. Alright, we gonna get a ten. Alright, there we Do go. You see a ten mana card pulls out an 8-8. Eight eight. It's not the worst. It's kind of mid, yeah. mid range. Uh, 10 mana cards typically have stronger battle cries. Yeah, yeah. And the stats vary a lot from 5-7s to 12-12s. Twelve mm -hmm. uh, whereas 8 mana cards are typically more stat heavy. You maybe have more like at the end of your turn type of effects like mm -hmm. uh, I wonder Ragnaros, the Light Lord, um, I like the turn play here. Yeah, definitely to answer it, the Sea Giant. Yeah, it answers the Sea Giant, and it helps protect the Burgly Bully for maybe a little bit longer to see if Arizona can proc it. Yeah, it does. Um, so Arizona State. ASU has no way of getting to this Burgly Bully, and it likely won't for at least two more turns mm -hmm. because of the Terum. Uh, we'll probably see Draconid come down. Oftentimes when you're playing against a control paladin as priest, you'll must sometimes pull Uther from an operative, but Stanford's had it since turn one. There is no chance of Arizona stealing, mm -hmm. or Arizona State rather, stealing that valuable card. Same with Ragnaros. So, I think all that's left is, is Tyrion, and again, yeah, Nazoth's not worth really taking. Useful. But, is he looking at Tar Creeper instead? Maybe Tar Creeper Cabal? You wish hmm. to okay, so this sets Interesting up... Interesting choice. This sets up ASU to be able to hit that bully next turn mm -hmm. and then be able to play free from amber provided stanford doesn't somehow deal with this board 
Why do you think that ASU opted to give the plus three health to the Tar mm. Creeper instead of, say, one of their three threes so that it could hit Tarim twice? Um, I think ASU may be playing around maybe Consecration, maybe a weapon, although this taunt is not terrible. Um, but... Stanford opting for the beetle instead of the beetle and a dude instead of the four or five. Uh, but a dusk breaker. Mm. That that is a uh, that is a full clear. Is there a better way to do that? So um, you bump the 1-8 and a 3-3 three, three into the 3-7. Another 3-3 three, three into the 1-4. You Dusk Breaker and then you can Talon Priest. Yeah. I guess this also works, right? Because you save more health on your, yeah, your Tar Creeper. And then you Talon Priest your 3-4. Your 3-1, rather. Yeah. All right, this is a nice board that ASU has got here. It um, is. Doesn't die to consecration in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And so Stanford just with the Ragnaros, it looks like? Yeah. Ragnaros is not a bad play. Um, if ASU mm -hmm. wanted to clear it, they would have to throw three of their minions into it. Um, but it also is not super impactful because it is you can just ignore it and deal that eight damage plus two back to the face. Um, granted, that's kind of a that's a, that's an uphill battle to try to continue hitting your opponent's face while they have while they heal it for eight every turn. Um, so it makes makes ASU make some hard choices. And that's what I like about Ragnaros Light Lord. Hmm. So Yeah, and you and you play it you play it this turn because ASU is on nine mana, right? So you can't mind control this. Yeah. Uh, and there's only a few cards in ASU's hand. So there's no chance well, it's not no chance, but it's Spike very Ridge. unlikely that Grand Archivist comes down and steals this yeah. rag. Um but Spike Ridge Steed is always a good pick. It's a nice card. <laughs> it's a nice card. Uh, I definitely think ASU just takes out the rag here though, uh, trades it away. Uh, oh, I guess not. They'd rather punch 10 to face. Okay. Maybe Put they some. want that Light Lord. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But then Stanford just plays Equality Consecrate. Yeah, Stanford could Equality Consecrate pretty easily here. They could just Equality Consecrate now. Yeah. Um... I feel like what are their mm. their only other choices are play more taunts, hit more things. I feel like that's just like this is a this is a pretty good time to equality consecrate. Um, what if? What if? You equality consecrate and then adapt your Ragnaros. Let me think. And give it. So you can't target it. You adapt it so it can't be targeted. That would be pretty nice. It would still be a... The board would be clear, but it would be an 8-1. Sure. Mm. Priest has played both dust breakers. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Looks like we're just gonna, we're gonna pad our board. Just go super wide. Alright. Heal for 8 more. 
we going to hit? No, we want to hit no, our face. You, you want to, yeah. I mean, what is a 1 4 doing to you? Yeah. So Twilight Acolyte. Just getting in your way. We could mind control here. Or we could. We have that taunt up. We could. So ASU. We could Twilight Acolyte ASU Spike Ridge contemplating. <laughs> yep. So this, the Spike Ridge Steed allows you. Eh. So you, you hold the mind control for Tyrion. Yes. Buff your hero. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you hold the mind control for Tyrion. Yeah. Instead of Rag because Nazar brings back Tyrion. Nothing brings back Rag. I think we'll definitely be seeing a quality consecrate come out here from. Or we could double consecrate, and we'd just be left with the uh, one five one. That is true. Um, and then you just trade in the one one, and yeah, like ASU has three. a two six. I don't know if there's, because at this point you've you've used both of your. Um, what am I trying to say? Both of your uh, pyromancers. So equality mm. really is only doing you a whole lot of good with Consecrate anymore. Yep. Um, so you might as well save the other Consecrate um, because it's going to be more useful for you later. Yeah, alternatively, you save your quality and prevent your rag from just getting sniped, but it looks like AC opts for the quality consecrate and then maybe stone hill defender call this up. Yeah. And Don't see a Tyrion pick. Blossoms. Now we have three from Amber, Obsidian Ooh, Statue. Obsidian Statue is good. It is nice. Gruel is... Gruel is also nice. An interesting choice. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. It's a 9-9 nine, nine by the time it gets back to your turn. Uh-huh. Hmm. I actually don't hate the Gruel because it puts way more pressure on Stanford than yeah. a 4-8, right? Rule just spirals out of control. Yeah. And, and Stanford just... Oh, looks like they do opt for the Obsidian Statue, though. All right. Bummer, I wanted to see some cruel shenanigans. It could have gotten super crazy with Shadow Ascendant. Yeah, it could have. Well, we do see Buff go over there to our good friend the obsidian statue now 5-9 a little bit more menacing um, Stanford could opt to use one of these adaptations to take out that obsidian statue yeah try to get the poison yeah um, one it's a one and three not doesn't always yeah. work out uh, looks like they just go for the sock which brings back much, but honestly, at this point, Stanford just wants to draw cards. They want to draw yeah. their combo. Yeah, they don't... <laughs> uh, <laughs> smart play by Stanford, recognizing they will get the heal, so you get the one damage in. <laughs> Win a root. Well, that's definitely yeah. equality. That's pretty obvious. Um, equality pretty... They don't really want to play it, though. Yeah. So now I think you just Tar Creeper. Uh, you hit in. Kill Rag. Tar Creeper deal.
All right, so, um, yeah, doing basically what you said. Uh, they have the seven mana left. What are they thinking about? They're thinking about playing the Tar Creeper, I guess. Um, choosing not to. So, Stanford still has Uther, still hasn't played Uther. Um, they have the Consecrate, um, which can... Mm. Playing the Consecrate will allow them to only spend two minions killing this... Uh, I've seen statue. Uther also can help with that. And so there you go with Uther. Get that down. We're kind of reaching the point where we want to start zero powering anyways because we're running out of other things to play on the board. And so having those two twos is going to be helpful. Um, and I like this here because, I mean, what else are you going to, uh, when are you... See that, that few draws that, that eager for your board to just kind of be picked away, right? Like, you still haven't drawn Beardo, you still haven't been able to play any of your really big uh, odd rope. That's just beautiful. Yeah, adaptation. Um, well, we do see the Tyrion in Arizona State holding this mind control for that Tyrion. I wonder if we'll see him come out next turn, or if Stanford will just kind of hold back. It does seem like we have a bit of a uh, spectator yeah, issue we have a, here. We have a nice little rope bug. Uh, we'll see if one of our observers can uh, catch up here. Yeah, we'll see. Might just go away. All right, there we go. Looks like things seem to have fixed themselves. Going to use the adaptation on the Tar Creeper. Um, I think they should go with the Taunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it double Taunt. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone knows double Taunt is better than one Taunt. I feel like Stanford, at the point where we're at, Stanford... I think Stanford's in a pretty good position. They're in a pretty good position. What I was going to say is I feel like they probably know that ASU is holding on to a mind control. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Either that or it's it's still in their deck, right? But yeah. they've held on to these two left cards for so long. Going to try and get another coin. Yeah, so um, Stanford just needs no rest. Beardo at this they point. Beardo. <laughs> Come on, Beardo. Yeah, if Stanford can manage to just top deck Beardo. Ah, uh, finally drawing the dragon so they can play that operative. Yeah, so ASU will get some information as to what is still in Stanford's deck. And they'll they see, see Beardo. Beardo <laughs> then they know Stanford doesn't quite have the combo yet, so they know they have a little bit of time left. But that, that window is rapidly closing. Yeah. And ASU's in a tough place here. They know that they don't want to proc the Burgle Volley because they know that they need one more coin. Um, but they also don't want to keep that 2-2 alive because it just makes the combo easier. Yeah, definitely. Kind of a, a rather tricky spot here for ASU. I mean, you, you definitely... Mm, giving them that second coin... Yep. Stanford's held on to that first one since the beginning of the game. I think that was the Beardo on the left there that they probably saw. Um. Well, Stanford can just keep stalling it out. Play this Ancient of Blossoms. Yeah, Stanford has so many options. And honestly, they could and what at this point, what is ASU's win condition? Like, 
Azeroth will be purified. There really isn't one. Yeah. Sanford has just been able to delay for so long. Yeah, and ASU just really hasn't... I don't know, they had such a good curve early on, but they opted to play a little bit slower and with less threats, and Stanford just kind of dealt with it. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think we see the Duskbreaker, Spikered Steed come down here. You have to deny Stanford from playing those those horsemen, and yeah. and you kill this 3-8. This Stanford's going to draw a Beardo threats. at any moment here. Yeah. Uh, not 100% sure how many cards are left in Stanford's deck, but from the looks of it, not many. Maybe three? As soon as they draw Beardo, they have it. Yeah. Quickly. Two cards. cards. Beardo, last card. Beardo's the last card in Stanford's deck. You know what? Well, I, I guess you can just quality consecrate. But <laughs> I, I was thinking, you know what? I'm just going to slam Tyrion because why not? <laughs> sure, you can mind control, but I'm just going to win next turn. Was merely but now they go for the Spike of Steed. Ooh. ASU doesn't have any way to deal with this immediately. They would have to mind control it. And then Stanford just wins next turn anyways. I think that's game. They could get... Uh, I, I think this was game a while ago when we realized that Arizona State had no actual win condition left. Yeah. Man, Spike Ridge Steed, though. <laughs> yeah. Well played. Yeah, and Stanford knows they have it. I'm sure ASU knows they have it. But yeah, Beardo, last card. Let's see this. Stanford just putting on a clinic of how to just last long enough to draw their entire deck. Exodia Paladin. In tournament play, ladies and gentlemen. And he gets the win against ASU. We're going to game five for the third time in a row tonight. This has been an enormous amount of Hearthstone. Yes. <laughs> Jordan's getting a little exhausted over here. <laughs> I mean, I played over six hours of Hearthstone last night <laughs> because it was the last day of the season. And this, we're going on five hours now? Yeah, well, it's 11 p.m. here, Mountain Time, so we've been here for four hours, yep. Four hours of just, like, back and forth drama-filled Hearthstone action. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, so... This has been so fun. Stanford... Ties it up 2-2 with their Exodia Palant. We are now going to see Tempo Mage against Spiteful Dragon Priest. And I'm not going to lie, Tempo Mage has the edge here. I, mm -hmm. I would be shocked if Stanford doesn't pull this off. Yeah. Uh, if they get any kind of good curve. Let's go right into that. So we're moving into the game here. And so far, looking a little bit better for ASU. Probably toss away all but the Cleric here. Um, we'll see what happens after the mulligans here. Get the okay. score there updated. It is 2-2. Two, two. So this is the final game. Winner takes all the marbles. And in this case... All the glory, because this is a show match between these two schools, so it's more of an exhibition and less of a uh, meaningful match in terms of match score mm -hmm. over the course of the season. But it is still a, uh, a meaningful match to these two schools to show. Those marbles are precious. Yep. <laughs> Got to get those uh, 
<laughs> gotta, Those big ones, right? Gotta get them marbles. The shooter marbles. We got some good, uh, good opening hands here. Um, yeah, that that Swampoos might just win ASU the game. You think so? It might. It might. Do you they... definitely don't tempo it out. Okay, I was you gonna never say. Never just play it. Do they use it on Alaneth? Absolute. That's yeah. that's why it's here. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it's here. That's why I said that might just win them the game. <laughs> might. Alan guarantees you draw three cards because yeah. it happens at the end of your turn. Honestly, if I was playing, I would have gone to turn two and I would have been like, Mage doesn't play weapons. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have been wrong. <laughs> we'll see, though. We'll see if it ends up mattering. Stanford has yet to draw it, but there are several turns to go still. Uh, Do you Stanford, tempo the valet here? Uh, tempoing the valet is okay. Um, There's not a lot of great. I mean, what else are you doing? Pinging? I think I think you just valet uh, because you can't let this cleric get out of hand and draw ASU four cards. Um, there is the Spiteful Summoner. Spiteful Summoner. This is looking pretty good for Arizona State. We'll see what Stanford ends up pulling off, though. Three for Man Amber. Burst. Making... Spiteful Summer Summoner definitely will hit it. No, Arizona State has two free from Ambers. Yeah, it was Stanford that only had one. Correct. Um, I think you just drop the Arcanologist, kill the... The cleric and the hope your opponent doesn't have Duskbreaker. Hmm. Because um, Duskbreaker is a very good card in this matchup. Yeah. Stanford opting for the Arcane Intellect and push damage face. Now, Stanford's tech cards in their Tempo Mage build are Potion of Polymorph and Spellbreaker. Um, I feel like Potion of Polymorph is not bad because uh, it's good if it lands on an operative yeah if it lands it can land has a lot of good things it could land on or like a twilight drake uh, landing on spiteful summoner not the best thing in the world yeah um, I actually do like Stanford just opting to go for damage here because they recognize our win condition is burn if we just willy-nilly are you talking about the pyroblast no well, I'm talking about just playing AI and pushing all his face instead of killing the cleric. Yeah. Um, and so, oh, like we just Stanford, need. Stanford. Yes. Yeah. Did I say Arizona State? <laughs> I no, meant Stanford. I think, but I yeah. I so mistaken. you glyph, you frostbolt, you just go face. Go face. Although you probably frostbolt the three three, but you definitely glyph and frostbolt, and you just you just keep nuking ASU in the face because you have. Fireball, you've got Firelands Portal, you've got who knows what you pull off Glyph. Play Glyph. I want to see what you get, what they pull off Glyph. <laughs> All right, here we go. Their options are... Potion of Polymorph, Shifting, Shifting Scroll, scroll and AI. Arcane Missiles. AI is not the word... Or not AI, Arcane AI. Missiles. Not Arcane AI. Missiles. Arcane Missiles. That's they went for Potion of Polymorph. Yeah, so... Uh, Eh. It's okay. But yeah. I've gone with shifting scroll. <laughs> I, I would have, I would have liked to see arcane missiles. That's one extra damage on your mana worm. That's true. Potentially three damage all to your opponent's face. Stanford going for Archaeologist. I really would have liked to see the frostbolt on the three three there. Yeah. Because then it protects your mana worm. Yeah, and then you can play Arcanologist later. Yeah, or just never, because you have a secret. <laughs> or, you know, never. You have burn. It's true. You want to just kill your opponent. Um, Arizona State down to 20 health. Uh, they'll likely just play the Tar Creeper here. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, kill this Mana Worm, uh, and then... And then pass. Uh, yeah, Stanford not protecting their mana worm here. Mm. 
I don't know. I I really would have liked to see them protect us somehow. Because next turn, you have a fireball for a taunt that comes down. If you really need to. Along with Potion of Polymorph. That's a lot of damage. Now, I guess if you're Stanford, you... Kieran Tormage, Frostbolt, trade into this Tar Creeper, and then what Counterspell. To do. What to do. It prevents ASU from coining out Spiteful Summoner. ASU, though, getting the Pyroblast. I just now noticed that. Yeah, you just <laughs> you just noticed that. I just now noticed that they yeah. got that off the. Uh, the glimmer. The glimmer. Yeah, so they have that. If things get too close. Yeah. So as you trying to coin out the spiteful summoner, we'll have to opt for likely the tar creeper and heal. Why don't you... Oh, okay. Why wouldn't you Dracon it there? If you don't... If you Dracon it operative there, you're you're just taking even more damage, right? Right. Let's see. So Stanford here could play Archaeologist, Potion of Polymorph, whatever secret comes off Archaeologist, and Cabal, Crystal Runner. That's true. What to do? However, they decide yeah. we're going to commit six damage to minion and push six damage to their face with minions. So Keep it's kind of a an equal trade there, but they have three minions on board and no secrets. Here comes the spiteful summoner. Yep. We have a 50-50 chance. If it's a taunt, ten. It's really good for Arizona State. If it's not, they are in big trouble. Yuck, that is so not run. that is not what ASU wanted. No, it's not. And actually there aren't there's what one taunt that costs ten mana? Um I don't even which one are you, is that the the six the no. six is that is the six ten with taunt? That's not a ten mana. That's not no. Is there any taunts that cost 10 mana? I can't Gosh. think of any. Now I need to... Sleepy Dragon's mm. 9 mana. I'll figure it out. Um, Either way. So let's see. Stanford, Stanford has a lot has of le They've got no, one off lethal. lethal. Yeah, they have one off lethal. Literally one off lethal. What to do? What and I think do? if you're Stanford, you just go for it. Yeah. Because you're, you're setting up four minions on board. ASU doesn't have any real way of, of dealing with all of them. Time runs out on me. And that, that just sets you up for lethal. Interesting. So they... Uh, uh, production team is telling me there are no 10 cost time. Right? Yeah, so... Unlucky for ASU that it actually pulled the mind control instead of the free from amber. Um, although even still, I don't, I don't think ASU can can recover. Yeah, from what this. can ASU? T they, I mean, they don't have a lot of options in hand. They can draconid, and what? But what can they get off of draconid that will? Nothing. Well played. No, nope, that's that's just game <laughs> because Stanford, Stanford knows. has. The Firelands in hand, and oh, and it's gonna get sheep, oh, and they're just dead with explosive, explosive ruins. ruins. That is game, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't even see the secrets there <laughs> far, but that is Stanford taking the game in game five. Game five, three to two, and like I said, you know, all these teams.
just managing to pull it all the way through every time. Yeah. And, and, and like I predicted there, the Secret Mage having that advantage over the, the Spiteful Summoner Priest because the Priest is fighting for board while the Mage is just... It's like Hunter, like Face Hunter, but with a Mage. Yeah. And with <laughs> a lot more consistency and just damage from everywhere. Yeah. So, good plays by yeah. both by both teams. Congratulations to Stanford for winning that. Um, good job, ASU. Good job, everyone who played tonight. Is a good time to be a college Hearthstone fan because we've got we've got some pretty good teams coming out here. Um, obviously, questionable plays, questionable uh, bands yeah, you see all that, over the you place. See that in Hearthstone <laughs> all the time. But let, let's go ahead and look at the standings after tonight's games uh, real quick before we sign off here yeah so we've got uh got like arizona uh versus ucla uh ucla took the win there and then uh oregon versus utah utah took the win and mm -hmm. then stanford versus arizona state stanford took the win however that uh match score did not affect their standings in the current overall uh, right. series because that was an exhibition match and then upcoming we will have Colorado versus USC to at a come. later time yeah so we've managed to get to through week three of FACG without any teams actually pulling ahead and getting two wins so it's still anybody's game right now um, and we've got five more weeks of group play to go before we reach the semifinals so be sure to stick around with us um, before we go, uh, we wanted to thank all of the volunteers who helped put this together, uh, uh, both Jordan and I and um, all of the other people who are working on the production team are volunteers here, um, here at the University of Utah, and so big thanks to them, to our, to our observers and our directors and everyone who is involved in the production. Um, couldn't, we couldn't do it without them, and if you want to... Um, subscribe to University of Utah Esports. Use that sweet free Twitch Prime subscription. All of that money goes to helping to fund this production and helping us to put on more productions like this in the future. Yep. And then also as a reminder, we'll be rebroadcasting last week's Rocket League games tomorrow starting at 6 p.m. Pacific at 7 p.m. Mountain Time uh, on the twitch.tv slash University of Utah Esports channel. And you can follow PacG on Twitter and Facebook uh, by the handle Pacific ACG. Yeah, so if you missed last week's Rocket League, be sure to tune in tomorrow. You can catch it again. Um, and be sure to cup tune in next Thursday because we'll be broadcasting more Hearthstone goodness. Uh, but I think that's it for us tonight. Um, I'm Solar. You can follow me on Twitter at Jerem Norris. Yeah, and I'm Jordan. And you can follow me at Jordan underscore Runyon. And have a good night and game on.